This is Brother Peter Diamond, VaticanCatholic.com. They are not using the votes to determine who wins the presidency. The networks called the South Carolina Republican presidential primary race with only 1% of the actual vote in. Here's the clip from CBS in which they declare the winner, yet they admit that they only have 1% of the actual vote in. And they say that they're able to make this projection based on exit polls. After I play this clip and during the course of this video, I will explain why this admission proves that the media knows the result in advance, that the votes are not being used to determine who wins, and that the whole thing is a hoax. This is a campaign 2012 update. There is breaking news at this hour. CBS News is now projecting in a major upset Newt Gingrich has won South Carolina's Republican presidential primary, defeating one-time front-runner Mitt Romney. Have a look at the votes in so far. We have Newt Gingrich with 1% of the vote in. You see that Romney has a higher vote there, but what we are projecting is based on the exit polling that we did. Our projection of a Gingrich win is based on the analysis of the early vote count that you just saw and on the polling that we did of voters after they cast their ballots. CBS, like the other networks, actually publishes the results of its exit polls online. Here's an image of CBS's published exit poll results for the 2012 South Carolina primary. Guess how many people participated in their exit poll? You can see that the total number of people who participated in their exit poll was 2,381. Well, there were 601,166 total votes cast in the South Carolina primary. Do the math. 2,381 is 0.396% of 601,166 votes. So their exit polling data, upon which they claim to base their declaration concerning who has won, is based on not even 1% of the people who voted. It's not even a half of 1%. It's 0.396% or 0.4%. That is a joke. It's not possible for them to determine the winner based on exit polls. The only way that they can determine who has won the election without any of the votes, as they do, is if they know the winner in advance, or the people who are determining the winner give them that information in advance. And that's what's happening. The election is rigged. It is not based on how the people are voting. With computerized voting, it's over. The whole thing is programmed in advance. It's all decided in advance. And one of the reasons this is so clear in South Carolina is because South Carolina is completely electronic. In some of the other states, it's not as easy for them to pull off the hoax. For example, in caucus states, it's more difficult to rig the election. And some of the candidates that they want to push down, they have to give more votes to. However, those can be and are still rigged, as we will see. So in South Carolina, it's extremely easy for them because it's all computerized voting. And that's why we see that the very moment the polls close, with 0% of the actual vote in, they determine who has won, and they claim to be able to know it based on exit polls, which is total nonsense. And they did call these elections without any of the votes in, because they actually made these, quote, projections before they even had 1%. Here's the clip from Fox News and host Bill Hemmer, in which he says that they determined the winner with less than 1% of the actual vote in. By the time he gets to his segment and finishes speaking, they had already supposedly received 2% of the actual vote, but he indicates that they had less than 1% when they made their, quote, projection based on the exit polls, which, as we just saw, are nothing. Also notice in this segment that they not only tell us that they've determined the winner, which is a complete hoax, but the people are so clueless that they can actually tell them that they know how particular groups of people broke down and how this particular segment of society favored this particular candidate. This is all based on the same exit poll of 2,381 people, which is nothing.
more uh, explanation for what we've seen in these results tonight. Hey, Bill. Good evening again, Megan. Brett, great to see you. Now, listen, the results are preliminary right now. In fact, we only have about 1% or less than 1%. Uh, of the uh, of the vote that we can tabulate right now, but based on the exit polling, uh, this would seem to be uh, a major concern to the Romney campaign. What we're about to show you here, uh, and a a big boost to Gingrich in one part of the state that uh, this is real time voting, by the way, and one part of the state that that frankly Romney should have done quite well with his economic message. About two percent of the vote right now uh, is in. We've already called it for Gingrich. Okay, Romney's in the orange. Gingrich is in the yellow. A lot of space is still to fill in here. But I want you to key in on an area over here. Uh, this is the PD River area. But based on what we're seeing right now in 2012, uh, Gingrich swept this entire area, which as you move toward Florida in 10 days from now, there'll be certain parts of that state that reflect a, a, a similar economic downturn uh, here in South Carolina. At the moment, we can say that Gingrich did very well up here in upstate. Um, very conservative voters, evangelical voters there. Uh, here in the PD River area, Gingrich has done exceedingly well also. Down here in the low country where you would expect Mitt Romney to, 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 to do quite well, um, that is where McCain performed so well in 2008, it seems to be rather split, almost 50-50 now between Gingrich and Romney and the support they're getting there. Uh, based on also what we're seeing here in the middle part of the state, Columbia, uh, where you've got big counties like Richland right here where the state capital is. A lot of votes right there. What we're seeing in counties like Richland and Lexington uh, County to the west of Richland, that's where Romney appears to have his most strength so far based on the exit polling that we're seeing in South Carolina. So he confirms that they called the race with less than 1% of the actual vote, that they base it on the exit polling data. And they attempt to give you all of these details about how particular counties felt, how particular religious groups felt. This is all without any of the votes and based on a few exit polls. This is a total joke. In fact, here is an image of Fox News' published exit poll results from the South Carolina Republican primary. As you can see, the number of total participants is 2,381. That number is quite similar to the number we looked at previously in the CBS results. In fact, it's the exact same number because it's the exact same poll. They use the exact same group to get their exit polling data. The reason they all use the same group is because if they did not, and the exit polling were independent and legitimate, you would get a variety of results. And that would preclude the networks from unanimously announcing the so-called winner at the same time or almost at the same time. They must be on the same page, in other words. This article, which was put out by the Associated Press and carried by ABC News, says that, quote, these results are from an exit poll conducted for AP and the television networks by Edison Research as voters left their polling places at 35 randomly selected sites in South Carolina. The survey involved interviews with 2,381 Republican primary voters and has a margin of sampling error of plus or minus three percentage points, end quote. So here we have confirmed that all of the networks use the exact same poll, and yet they dishonestly and deceptively act as if they're coming up with their own calculations. Here are two clips. The first one is from host Keith Olbermann, in which he declares that all of the networks, with the exception of CNN, have already declared a winner in South Carolina. Usually the networks and the media call the winner at the same time but occasionally one or two of them will lag a few minutes behind to give the impression that there's some difference between them when in fact they are just different flavors of the same conspiracy. They are all receiving the same information. So in the first clip, notice how he says that all of the networks, with the exception of CNN, have already declared the winner. And notice the graphic which indicates that they have 0% of the actual vote in. In the second clip, it is audio from CNN, in which they explain how they've crunched the numbers and that this special calculus has enabled them to come up with the result, as if the information they're receiving about exit polls and basing their conclusion on 
is different from the other networks which had already declared a winner, when it's not. It's all a deception to make it look like there's something more involved with their hoax than there actually is. In fact, as you watch these clips, keep these images in mind. This is CNN's exit poll for the South Carolina Republican primary. Notice the number of respondents, 2,381. It's the exact same number, the exact same poll, and the exact same information. Apparently all the major news organizations except CNN have already called this race for Newt Gingrich. Uh, NBC is suggesting that it might be a 9 or 10 point victory, perhaps double digits beyond 10 points. The real vote, the, you know, the vote that people actually go in and cast, we were able to match together with these numbers as we talked before, put them together. And what's interesting is that we did is we focused on uh, the counties that we thought that Newt Gingrich would do well in, and he has done well in, or he has exceeded what we thought he would do. We're able to take this formula, put it together. Our exit team, well, exit poll team, which is our pollster, our statisticians, and our political folks together, crunch it together. That's how we get away. So even though technically Romney's ahead in the raw votes, the votes that have so far come in, you were still able to make this projection? Yeah, absolutely, because we're taking, we're taking this exit poll data from the exit poll interviewers, put it together, mold it together, and that's where you get the statistical model where we're able to project the winner. All right, it's a fascinating uh, calculus from Mark Preston. Appreciate it. We'll check in with Mark throughout the evening. It's just a complete hoax. CNN's data are the same as the other networks. The same group, Edison Research, supplies all of the television networks with the same exit poll data. And when CNN waited longer than the other networks, they only waited a few minutes longer. They wound up calling the race with 1 or 2 percent of the vote in. So they're not using the votes. It's all determined in advance. That's the only way that the networks could call the winner with none of the actual vote in. Now, as I said, it's very easy for them to do this in South Carolina because South Carolina is 100 percent electronic voting. Most voting today is electronic, but in some other states, there is a certain percentage of hand-counted ballots. In those cases, it's a bit more difficult for them to rig the election, but it's often rigged as well. For example, Iowa is considered to be arguably the most transparent of all the states because they hand-count the ballots in public and then call or fax in the results to the headquarters. But it's now been confirmed that the Iowa election was rigged as well, Eight precincts mysteriously disappeared. They went unreported. The most reasonable explanation for that is that they deliberately did not report those totals because they did not want to include them in the official result. Even with their, quote, announced winner, they had to later admit that they were wrong. They then said that the missing tallies from third place and beyond don't even matter. And in the following clip, we're going to see that Fox News reported that in the case of one missing precinct, they didn't even use the actual vote totals. They simply consulted Romney's camp and Santorum's camp, and they came up with a, quote, gentleman's agreement about what the vote tally should be. Chris Wallace, Chris, let's take it. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, uh, Carl, you've just gotten some word from uh, a source in the Republican National Committee. Tell us what it is. Uh, first, that uh, they made the correction in Story County, which moved it from an 18-point margin for Santorum to a four-point, a four-vote margin for Santorum, and that the uh, Keokuk County precinct, the Romney and Santorum people have agreed what the count was, and it will show an eight. No, this is in Clinton. This is in Clinton County. Right. You have the one outstanding precinct in the state, and that it will show an 18-vote uh, victory in that precinct for for Mitt Romney, which will give him a statewide victory of 14 votes over over uh, Rick uh, Santorum. So I, I don't understand. You're saying that they basically have come to an agreement as to what the, the vote's going to be the, in Clinton? The, the uh, official, the person who's got the official piece of paper is missing. But the Romney and Santorum people who are monitoring it agree on what the number is. So until they're going to, they've, they've basically agreed, we will confirm, both of us, the, the outcome in this, in this uh, particular precinct, and, and the state party will accept that. So they don't even have the results. They don't even use the results. They will simply allow the Romney camp and the Santorum camp to decide what the results were. And the state will accept that. That's not even to mention the documented eight missing precincts and all kinds of other anomalies. In addition to the fact that the GOP moved the vote count to a secret location. As I said, the most reasonable explanation for why these papers were not turned over from the other precincts is that they did not want to include them 
in the official result. According to the article Iowa Vote Fraud Official, quote, other missing or uncounted votes were expected to be heavy Ron Paul supporting major populated areas and college town precincts, now leaving the true winner forever in question, end quote. And it's interesting that with these eight precincts missing, Ron Paul wound up finishing in a very close third place. In this article called 2012 GOP Caucus Count Unresolved, it also confirms that eight precincts were not reported. It says that they will never be certified. It says that we will never know who won. It also makes the amazing admission that for years, the Iowa vote count was turned over to the Voter News Service. The Voter News Service replaced the News Election Service, and the National Election Pool, which works with Edison Research, is the latest version of that organization. It's a consortium of the television networks and the Associated Press. So what this article says, and this article was written by the Des Moines Register's chief political writer, is that in many years the tabulation for the votes in Iowa was handled by the media. That's what it says. Here's the 1996 note. Quote, Republicans in Iowa decided to do no official party count. Instead, the tabulating was handled by the Voter News Service, which replaced the News Election Service. End quote. The Voter News Service again refers to the television networks and the Associated Press. So we have not free elections. We actually have the media controlling the elections. This is from the Des Moines Register's chief political writer. No wonder, then, that in most cases... The media can declare a winner with 0% or 1% of the vote in. And so the whole thing is rigged. The whole thing is a hoax. In the places where computerized voting predominates, which is almost everywhere, it's very easy for them to rig the election. That's why they can call those states with none of the votes or with a very small percentage of the votes in. In a few of the other cases, it requires a little bit more effort, such as in the caucus states. That's also why a candidate the media does not consider to be, quote, top tier, might do very well in a state like Iowa, and yet he will have no chance as we move into the other computerized voting states. I also find it interesting that CNN calls their coverage of the elections America's Choice 2012. Perhaps they call it America's Choice to put a special emphasis into the minds of the audience, that America, the people, are determining the winner when the facts indicate otherwise. Another noteworthy example of what we're discussing came from the 2010 senatorial election in California between Democrat Barbara Boxer and Republican challenger Carly Fiorina. NBC declared the winner of that race with only 17% of the vote in, and you can see on the screen that of the 17% of the vote that they supposedly had in, Fiorina was leading Boxer. So they still didn't have 83% of the vote, and of the 17% that they supposedly had, Fiorina was leading. Nevertheless, they called the election for Boxer at that time, and what do you know, Boxer wound up winning. That's because they knew the result in advance. After seeing this expose, someone may ask why the media would call the results so early, for example in some cases without any of the votes, and risk their hoax being uncovered. They could simply wait longer. And there are two reasons for this. The first reason is the ratings. And the second reason, which is the most important one, is that the media calls the results so early and risks their hoax being uncovered. Because by declaring the winner before any average person, or even the people who work at the election sites could possibly know the winner, the media can create the impression, in the minds of average, undiscerning Americans, that the media is all-knowing. The average American will then look to the media with confidence and believe what the media tells him. For after all, the media knows who wins these elections before any of us could and in a way that sounds far too complicated for us to understand. The average person will then believe the media when the media ostracizes a particular candidate, says that candidate cannot win, or puts out their phony and completely manipulated polls. Thus, their announcement of the winner, without any of the votes, is crucial to their control of the people, and they correctly assume that their story will be accepted without question by almost everyone. Here's the clip from computer programmer Clint Curtis, who testified during a congressional hearing 
about how easy it is to rig elections. Mr. Curtis, would you please state your full name for the record? My uh, name is Clinton Eugene Curtis. And where do you reside? Tallahassee, Florida. And what is your profession? I'm a computer programmer. Would you please speak into the microphone so the audience can hear your testimony? I'm a computer programmer. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. How do you know that to be the case? Because in October of 2000, I wrote a prototype for President Congressman Tom Feeney at the company I work for in Oviedo, Florida, that did just that. And when you say did, did just that, it would rig an election? It would flip the vote 51-49 to whoever you wanted it to go to and whichever race you wanted to win. And would that program that you designed be something that elections officials that might be on county boards of elections could detect? They'd never see it. Mr. Would you answer that question once again? They would never see it. I will close this video with the footage from the 2008 presidential election. This footage shows that at the very moment the polls closed in the western United States, CNN and the other networks determined that Barack Obama had won all of those states. And notice that in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, the graphic says 0%. That indicates that the media did not have any of the votes from those states. And the total number of exit polls taken by the media for that particular election was not even one-tenth of one percent of the total number of votes cast. So, all of the states on the West Coast were declared won by Obama without any of the votes. And all of the networks made this declaration at the very same time, at the very moment the polls closed. The only reason that they wait until the polls close is because they are required to do so. It's obvious that they could declare the quote winner much earlier because they know the results in advance. They even count down the seconds. They just can't wait to let the world know what they've known all along. The whole thing is a hoax. We pointed this out years ago in our video, The Stunning Secret About Election Night. They are not using the votes to determine who wins. People need to wake up. So in, in a few seconds, those states will be closing their polls and uh, presumably will be able to uh, see what's going on and make uh, perhaps a major projection at that point. Uh, this is a moment that a lot of people have been waiting for. This is a moment that potentially could be rather historic. And CNN can now project that Barack Obama, 47 years old, will become the president-elect of the United States. We project he now has enough electoral votes, more than 270, more than enough to become the 44th president of the United States. This little-known U.S. senator only a few years ago, seemingly coming out of nowhere, delivering the uh, Democratic Convention keynote address back at the convention in uh, 2004, all of a sudden taking off a moment. <laughs>